today's talk is presented by our own Casey Reddy, who has informed me he's been working on it diligently for the last month, <laughs> or maybe earlier, later than that. This morning. This morning. Or this morning. Actually, uh, Bill Ross, who uh, came in a little while ago, told me uh, he was prepared to give a talk in case I didn't show up. So I asked him to go ahead and give the talk, but uh, he insists I do it. All right. Okay. Uh, the, the theme of the talk is uh, uh, theological models and uh, UU principles. Now, when I say theological models, uh, they're somewhat different from what we normally consider as a model for in the same scientific world. In scientific world, usually there is a hypothesis to explain a phenomena and check it out and see if it works, and then that becomes a model to explain that particular phenomena. Whereas uh, in theologically, the models of each religion has evolved over long periods of time, either uh, self-revealed or some people, uh, for whatever reason, came up with a particular belief system and, uh, uh, and everything else follows from that particular series. All right. Uh, just to, uh, most of you know uh, many different religious uh, beliefs and principles. Now, <coughs> if we consider, say, uh, monotheistic religions, uh, there is a, uh, a given hypothesis or a, a belief that there is a God and only God. There's only one God, period. Okay. And uh, everything else is uh, not correct. And the God, the particular God has laid down some uh, commandments or principles which we're supposed to abide by. And if we do live well and do not commit any sin, we have an opportunity to go to heaven. And if we do not commit sins, you are condemned to eternal hell. However, the, in Christianity in particular, of course, uh, Jewish faith is uh, uh, based upon this, the monotheistic uh, religion. And uh, then the more the recent uh, uh, monotheist religions and Christianity have, an addition, in addition, uh, Jesus Christ is the only Son of God, and He was sent upon to earth to bring salvation to uh, the people of the world. If you behave well and uh, do not commit sin, and ask for forgiveness, and believe in Jesus Christ, then your sins will be forgiven, you have an opportunity to go to hell. And the, then of course the Muslim faith have an addition to, uh, uh, after Jesus Christ came Muhammad, then to, he is the only last prophet for them. So these are the uh, principles. Now, the, uh, the other Eastern religions, uh, both Hindu religion and Buddhist religions, have some commonalities at the abstract level. However, in practical sense, they're very different. Their principles and their uh, models are somewhat different uh, in terms of practical uh, pra practice of religions. However, in the abstract sense, they have lots of commonality. In the, ab in the abstract sense, uh, the entire universe is part of the Brahman consciousness. Uh, now, what is that? It is uh, the all-encompassing consciousness out of which everything has come out. It is that uh, universal consciousness which has manifested into matter and energy and all the physical forms. Now, in some sense, it has some parallelness to the scientific model that uh, all energy and matter are equal. And uh, at some point, they both uh, came out of uh, the Big Bang. Whereas in the, uh, in the religious model, the theological model, the universal consciousness, the abstract consciousness existed all along. 
every so often it manifests itself in physical forms. Now, the physical manifestation out of the Brahman consciousness can take various forms. And then, in practical aspects of uh, the uh, Eastern religions, like in Hindu religion, various deities are different aspects of this uh, abstract energy. To give an example, God Varuna, he represents uh, water, liquid. God Vayu represents air. Uh, God Agni represents fire or combustion and so on. And then, then they also have a trinity of gods, super gods, um, Mahadev, that is Lord, Lord Ishwar and Lord Vishnu and Lord Brahma. Each have different aspects of governing the universe. And then, in another aspect of it, there is universal uh, goddess, Jagan Mata. She is the supersedes of everybody, the entire uh, physical manifestation. And this, she represents the physical, uh, the universal consciousness. Now, in Buddhist uh, practice, however, it's different. They, uh, when La, God, they were Gautama Buddha, essentially realized uh, whatever uh, consciousness uh, he was seeking for. He did not uh, use any of the previous traditions of uh, uh, rituals and gods and goddesses. However, subsequent to Buddha, the followers of Buddha, they came up with their own theology. There are various manifestations of uh, other Buddhist aspects. Now, however, the, even whether in Christianity or in monotheistic religion, as well as in uh, Eastern religions, there is some underlying theme, even in the uh, monotheistic religions, the, even though God created everything, but in some aspects, it says that God is present everywhere and in all of it. And similarly, in uh, Eastern religions, everything contained has some aspect of divinity. Now, in uh, we have the inanimate world and the life forms. Now, life forms and we have a variety of structures of life forms. And different life forms have different levels of consciousness and awareness. And human beings have the most amount of awareness and self-consciousness. The underlying theme of uh, Eastern religions that in all life forms there is presence of divinity. So that's the that's how we are connected. So that connection through life. You know, if you think about it, life itself, uh, in, uh, in, in all life forms, is somewhat mysterious in the sense that uh, scientifically you cannot explain how life works. And in fact, there's something else that makes life work. Not exactly uh, explainable through chemistry or uh, pure, pure genetics. It's uh, uh, somewhat unknown in terms of uh, scientific and biological uh, research. And yet, uh, in the theological models, divinity is represented in these life forms. That's how all the life forms are connected in some sense. Now, when we come to UU principles, the inherent worth and dignity of uh, every person Justice, equity, compassion in human relations. Acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. A free and responsible search for truth and meaning. The right of conscience and the use of democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. The goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Respect for the interdependence web of all existence of which we are a part. Now, these principles are not exactly a model of the, the, you know, the uh, irritated religion, but they have evolved over a long period of time and uh, out of uh, Christian traditions. But these principles are relatively new in terms of formulation. 
they probably did not exist to say 50 years ago in the sense that uh, many of the uh, white people did not believe in the equality of the non-white people with the white people. So however, we have evolved over that and the principles have come up. Now, how, how do these, uh, how, how can we reconcile them with uh, universal principles? Now, let me uh, read some a hymn, uh, 187, the words of it. Please, if you like, you can see that. Uh, I'm sorry, I, let me, I changed my mind. 193. <laughs> 193. 193. What number? 193. Yeah, I, I want you to follow the words. Our faith is but a single gem upon a rosary of beads, the thread of truth which runs through them supports our varied human needs. Confucian wisdom, Christian care, the Buddhist way of self-control, the Muslims' daily call to prayer are proven pathways to the goal. From many lips in every age, the truth eternal is proclaimed by Western saint and Eastern sage, and all the good, however, named. Beside the no blessed of our race, our lives as yet cannot compare. May we at length their truth embrace and in their sacred mission share. Now, such words as well as uh, our UU principles would make sense if there is some underlying uh, uh, faith in the fact that uh, there is something underlying through all of us. The connectedness exists in all of, uh, among us. Okay. To, I want you to go to 529. I'll, I'll read a few words. The stream of life, 529. The same stream of life that runs through my veins night and day runs through the world and dances in rhythmic measures. It is the same life that shoots in joy through the dust of the earth in numberless blades of grass and breaks into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers. It is the same life that is wrought in the ocean cradle of birth and death in ebb and in flow. I feel my limbs are made glorious by the touch of this world of life and my pride is from the life throb of ages dancing in my blood this moment by Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. Now, there are similar uh, readings and hymns uh, if we actually <laughs> look through the book. Bottom line is, uh, wh what I uh, think, as Unitarianism evolved from, from the time of Emerson, Channing, and various uh, other uh, great Unitarians and, and Universalists. Unitarians believed in the uh, unity of divineness. Uh, in other words, uh, they were the opposite of the Trinity concept of the merger uh, uh, Christianity. They thought it was all one God, which they were there. Now, Universalists, they always believed in the universalness of uh, uh, divinity. Slightly different uh, emphasis but that universality. It is that underlying current that would uh, make sense to, uh, for the Unitarian principles. See, if we say we believe in the equality of uh, worth and dignity of every person, that means we subscribe to the fact that there is some connectedness, inter interconnected web of life. We don't explicitly say that, but that's what's implied. Now, wh why is that important? If we, if we do not, uh, if we look at things as being simply random things and people are uh, 
uh, whichever way uh, are behaving, then it's hard to uh, connect in a very underlying sense that the other person is uh, uh, like me and, uh, and it would make sense to uh, believe in the golden rule that you don't want to uh, do something bad to the other person that you don't want to see them to you. That uh, particular principle <coughs> is based on uh, the fact that there is some connectedness to all people. Otherwise, it would not make sense. Now, we do not explicitly uh, announce it because we don't necessarily, we cannot necessarily prove it, but we inherently uh, feel it. When we talk about uh, in the famous phrase of the self uh, evident truths, and these are some of the things that people are inherently uh, feel and connect instead of being uh, uh, forced upon them or being proven in a particular fashion. It cannot be proven uh, philosophically or scientifically, but if you know something that's, uh, that sounds uh, correct to you, that experientially, that means uh, many of these uh, principles are, you feel to be correct experientially as opposed to intellectual. It is that experiential aspect of uh, religion, or uh, the principles of religion, that's more important than simply intellectual exercise, of logical exercise of uh, religious principles. Okay. So that's my main theme of the talk today. And perhaps you, uh, I'll, some of you will have uh, other ideas to contribute during your talk back. Thank you.